Hey everybody, it's Brad with another Floriani Total Control U video for you. Uh, so the first thing I want to talk about today is uh, an error that cropped up in the last class that I taught uh, where I was showing how to use the um, auto digitizing wizard and some people had Windows 11 PCs and one of the steps that I had them do didn't work because apparently Windows 11 uh, has changed the way that the paint program works in Windows, which is one of the steps that I use when I use the um, the auto digitizing wizard. So if you have uh, Windows 11, or if you're not sure if you have Windows 11, um, something that you can do to see whether you're you're going to experience this problem is uh, let's go ahead and create a new design on my Floriani today. If I load in the auto digitizing wizard which is this little wizard hat here and then it's the one that just looks like the original icon the orange one if i click on auto digitizing wizard here and i select an image i already actually have one selected uh and i go in and hit next here i have the option to hit edit image and on a windows 10 7 or any other windows when you click this by default Hang on, let me resize my window here. By default, you're gonna get something like this where you can actually go in and edit the image, right? And, you know, do whatever edits I want with it, okay? And if you have Windows 11, then what happens is you click this and nothing happens um, because the, the program that's built into Windows that that opens up is um, no longer there in Windows 11. So I'm gonna show you now how to um, kind of get a different program to use for that so that you can still uh, go and follow through. So when we do my class, everybody's going to be able to do it. So let me show you how to do that. Now, there's actually a lot of different solutions to this problem. As many solutions as there are different types of image editing programs available for Windows. Um, but what I was looking for was one that was similar to Paint uh, so that it you know, would be kind of similar to the way that I've done things in the past and also free. Uh, so if you have a preferred image editing program, you can, when we get to the point where we tell Floriani what program we're using, you can just point it to that program instead of the one that we're going to download here, um, and it'll it'll work the same way. But uh, so the website that the um, the the software is is getpaint.net. It's the the name of the program is paint.net. It's a freeware version of MS Paint essentially. Uh, it has a lot more stuff that you can do in it, but you can do exactly what we need to do for embroidery digitizing with this program. So what you're going to do to download this is you're going to click right here where it says get it now. Just click on that. Um, and then the one you want to choose is, uh, let's see, this one you actually have to pay for. Uh, it's just to support it though. So if you like it and want to support it, you can click on here and pay for it. Or if you click on this one, then it's free. Uh, and I'm just going to do that. Click on that and then click on free download now. Okay, now it's going to download a zipped folder here. Um, and you just go into your downloads folder and open it. If you're on Chrome like I am, you can just click on this little, you know, this part of it. Uh, and then I'm going to double click on the installation application here. I'm just waiting for it to um, to fire up. Shouldn't be too long. There we go. And I'm going to hit continue. Let it run its progress bar here. Shouldn't be shouldn't be all that long. And then you know we just wait for it to finish doing all these things. And I did check this to make sure that it's not some kind of uh, virus or something like that. Um, just go ahead and choose Express. That's fine. We'll hit next. All right, just agree to the license agreement, hit next. And uh, once it's done, it'll say that it's finished. Just go wait for this progress bar to go across the screen a couple times. All right, and then we don't need to start it right now, so I'm gonna uncheck that and say finish. All right, so now the next step is, we'll just go ahead and close this and I'm going to close my web browser. Um, so the next step is to tell Floriani to use that program that we just downloaded as our image editor. And the way that you do that is you go under Tools and then Preferences. 
And then under, uh, where is it? Uh, environment, you're going to change the image editing program from the default of MS Paint to other program. Now, I should say, this is the, you only need to do this um, if you have Windows 11, by the way. Okay, if you, if you have Windows 10 or Windows 7 or whatever, you don't need to do this. Okay, this is just if you're having the problem where it won't open. Uh, but anyway, we're going to go ahead and change this to other program. So you're going to go to, uh, from where it opens up, you're going to go to Program Files, and then look for Paint.net, and then the one that you want is this one that says Paint.net.exe, this file right here, you're going to left-click that and choose Open. That tells it that our image editing program is this Paint.net.exe, right? We're going to say OK. So, now, what that does is it makes it so when we go into our wizard here, and we bring up whatever image, I already have an image selected, so I'm going to hit next. When we bring up our image and we want to go and do our editing, hit next again, and say what we want to do is make it so that the background of this is a different color, so that it doesn't cut out all the white from the inside of our design, or maybe we want to get rid of the letters in here, which is something that I would want to do, because I always do my letters using the lettering tool, not the auto-digitizing tool. I can do that by hitting Edit Image, which I couldn't do on Windows 11 because it had broken the the way that paint works, the way that Floriani is expecting paint to work. Okay, so I'm gonna hit Edit Image here, and I, I gotta resize my screen, there we go. Uh, I hit Edit Image here, and then this is the program that comes up. Now, this doesn't work exactly the same uh, because the icons are, are slightly different. There are some differences. But if we look, we can figure out that, okay, this is the eyedropper, the color picker tool that I use to grab the color, right? So if I want to grab this white so that I can fill in the, the letters here and get rid of them, I can click on that. It selects white as my color, and then I can use the fill bucket tool here to fill in the letters to get rid of them. So if I click here, that letter's gone, and so on, and so on. It's getting rid of... Oh, getting rid of my letters one at a time. The crosshair is the point that you are gonna be using to click. Okay, so as long as I click right in there, there we go. Now I can see that some of these left a little impression. I don't know if you can see them or not, but if you click it again, it gets rid of them. Um, now, uh, once we've done that, we would do the same thing. Now this is just for, I I'm gonna be digitizing this design. Um, I guess I may as well just go ahead and digitize this whole design here as part of this video. Uh, I am getting rid of the letters in there. I'm gonna get rid of the letters in this one. And fill bucket there, 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 there. Getting rid of the letters. I'm just filling them in with the background color because again, I'm gonna come back and put those letters in uh, using the lettering tool because the auto digitizer is terrible at doing letters, yes. Uh, so we are now going to pick um, uh, oh, you know what? I don't want that to be black. I want it to be like a like a green type color. So we're going to fill in these. The reason I'm doing green uh, is because we want the background of our image to be a color that isn't in the image. Okay, if this was white, then the software is going to detect white as the background color and not digitize it. This design has white in it. So we need the background to be a different color than the image itself. And if, for instance, we wanted to get rid of and not have this white fill in here, we would make that green too. Although uh, I don't think that I want that in this case. So once we're done, just like in regular MS Paint, we would hit File and Exit choose save. Now in this one we have an additional thing where we have to say okay, but once we do that it brings in our edited image and we are ready to proceed with the rest of our digitizing. Um, so this is um, the only way that I was able to easily and freely um, make a kind of easy to figure out um, substitute for regular paint uh, for people with Windows 11, because uh, it was it was surprising and frustrating during my last class when <laughs> like half the people in the class were unable to open the image editing program. Um, so uh, yeah, this is the workaround. I guess I may as well go in and finish uh, digitizing this. So we'll go ahead and do that. We're gonna hit next, and uh, I'm gonna make sure that we don't fill the background color area with stitches. We hit next again, and just tell it to finish. That will end up with my design here. Okay. 
And there's just a couple of things that I would do to make this able to sew out a little bit better than it is. Uh, I would say that probably this red needs to sew out last. So I'm gonna take it and right click it and choose move last. Okay, so now that's on top of the other stuff. Um, I would also say that um, this white here, which is currently, actually, yeah, the white is fine. So yeah, the, I guess the order is fine like this. Um, although maybe, maybe I want this black to be on top of the red. So if I take this, this part here in my sequence and I move it last, let's see. Yeah, I feel like that overlapping this, I may like better, and maybe I may actually like this. I don't know, I'd have to play with it and see what order I think looks best. But you know, you can you can play with that. Uh, so let's go ahead and get our letters in. So what we wanna do probably is look at our original, um, our original image, uh, which one way we can do that is to bring it up as a backdrop so we can see exactly where it needs to be. So um, I, I don't have any backdrop, I don't have any background image in right now. Uh, and if I click this backdrop tool, then we can go and pick that same picture and it'll bring it in. We just have to size it so that it's the same size as our digitized version. Uh, and then if we have it in 2D, see I hit this block to turn it from 2D. If we have it in 2D, uh, instead of in the 3D, we can actually see through the stitches and say, okay, so there's our letters. Uh, let's see how tall our letters need to be and use the ruler and measure from here to here. They're 0.62 inches. Uh, so these letters have serifs. Um, so we want a block font with serifs uh, and we want to use the circle tool. Uh, so I'm going to go to, to text and use circle, right? And the center of our circle is basically the center of the design. So I'm going to kind of get as close to the center as I can. Click and then um, pick a font uh, up here using this that is, you know, similar to the way my letters look. So we want something that's got serifs, that's fairly blocky, and we'll find one that we think looks good. I'm just scrolling through these. Uh, broadcast might work. Let's choose that. Uh, and then this is, uh, what's this say? St. Francis. So we're going to type in up here, S-A-I-N-T-F-R-A-N-C-I-S. And they're all uppercase, so we're going to leave that. And then our height, I said, was uh, like 0.6 something. So we're going to do try 0.6 there. And then grab this blue ball to change the size of our circle that it's on. Okay, so... That's pretty good there. Um, the problem, of course, being that it uh, extends outside the bounds because the letters are a little too wide. We can uh, narrow the letters by using this ball here and get that so that it lines up as good as we can. And then we can rotate it using the blue ball again. So that looks pretty good. Uh, we do need to change the color so that it's red. So we'll do that. Um, yeah, I think that looks pretty good. And then, so we've got university goes down on the bottom. Um, now these are sans serif letters. So we've got a different font down here and they're also a different height. So we need a font with no serifs. That's going to be a block font, no serifs, uh, height about 0.4 ish. Uh, so we're going to go in and use our circle tool again, uh, again, click in the middle. Uh, this time we're going to put the letters on the lower. So we're going to get rid of the letters on the top and type in here university, all caps, Univer oops, university. Uh, we're going to hit apply. Um, and if we scroll down a bit, we see that's down on the bottom. Now, that, now this font is wrong. We need this font to not have the little feet and the little dingles there because it's uh, not a serif font. So let's look at our regular block fonts. B... Those are those have serifs. I thought there was one that's just called block. Am I crazy? Am I thinking of something different? Well, you know what we can do is if we change this from all fonts to just show block fonts. There we go. These are going to be all block style fonts. Anna, maybe it's kind of fat. Uh, let's keep looking. Well, there's definitely tons that are not block fonts in this list. Here we go, compact block, ooh, that looks perfect. Yeah, I like that. So we're gonna hit apply there. And remember, we wanted it to be uh, 
what, uh, like around 0.4, we'll do like 0.45 and hit apply. Um, and we'll get this so that it fits on here. Now the spacing of these is way different. See how far apart the, the letters are? Um, if we go in here and change our spacing, let's see what it looks like at a three. No, we're gonna be much more than that. See what it looks like at a 10. Even more. Uh, we could also make our letters wider. Let's do 150% width. That looks pretty good. And now these letters need to be white. So we're gonna go and change this back to white. Okay, so that's pretty good. And then we've got 1847. Um, let's see. Yeah, these we wanna have like the other ones. So let's do those as broadcast again. This time we don't need it on a circle though. So we're gonna just use the regular text. Uh, change this to broadcast so that it matches the others. And we're gonna do 18, hit apply. And then we'll just make it smaller with this little, put that there. And then we'll go ahead and make another one. This one needs to be 47. Okay, let's see what size we made the 18 so we can match them, 0.42. So we change this to be 0.42, hit apply, and then move those to overlap the 47 and then we can look at it in 3d again and there we go so there's our there's our logo um, and we digitized it using a different image editing program um, we used paint now that is we could certainly do a better job uh, if we digitize this manually but the whole point of this is to show you how to go ahead and get the best possible uh, image um, with without doing any manual digitizing at all. Um, all automatic stuff. So we're using automatic text, we're using automatic digitizing, um, and the only thing that we may want to do to this uh, is apply pull compensation to the lettering. Um, the When you use the auto digitizing wizard, it automatically applies pull compensation. So if we look in our pull compensation setting, uh, which is where? Split and where is it? Pull push, it's this one that looks like a little zigzag with a line through it. We can see that this has an absolute value of 0.4 already and it's ev everything other than the letters are gonna have that. Um, so it may behoove us to um, make it so that all of our lettering is like that too, so that they um, so that they look the same as everything else. So if we go and select just our letters, get to the pull push, we see that there's no pull compensation there. We can apply an absolute value of 0.4 millimeters like everything else and hit apply. Fattens up our letters some and that is going to look really, really good for a auto digitized design. So um, there we go. <clears throat> I hope that helps some people. Um, I'm sure that there are more people than just the four or five people in my class that are experiencing this problem. Um, so I hope that helps someone out there. Uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.